What is up everyone? Welcome to part four of the world's fastest G3 blue and white. Now, it is no secret, by this part I thought we'd have all of the upgrades installed and I thought we'd be testing the system and showing off what it can do. As you guys know, we are far from that. Um, the upgrade that could cause us the most hassle, um, which is the CPU, we haven't even touched it yet. So it looks like this series is going to get quite a few more parts. We could be getting up into part 6, part 7, who the heck knows. So firstly, I know multi-part series, people have different opinions about them. I do apologise, but the reason why things are working out the way they are is because this is what I call a real-time series. I basically film as I go, and then when I decide to stop filming, that's when I edit the video and upload it. So you guys get the exact same... you're always in the exact same place that I'm in. Uh, at the end of part three, that is exactly how this system is, you know, I've done nothing else to it since that video. So for me personally, even though it could end up being a lot of parts and a lot of video, I, I hope it's worth it. But if any of you guys at any point in this series start to get a little bit uh, bored or sick of the updates, then let me know. And what I'll do is I'll film the lot and I'll make a nice snappy final part and uh, edit it down and and yeah it, it could be you know two or three weeks down the line that way but at least it'll be sort of snappier but anyway let's get straight into it so as you guys know we have installed Tiger on the RAID 0 SSDs that did not work we tried installing it again that did not work we tried cloning from the IDE drive that also did not work so a couple of things Few people want me to boot into verbose mode to take a look at what's going on. So let's do that right now. Command V. And this way, we should get some kind of indication as to why it's not booting up. Okay, so between then and now, for some reason, um, we're not even getting an Apple logo. So what I think we should do is forget the last half of the last part and uh, try it all again. Um, it's just not finding an OS at all. So let's put the Tiger Disk back in and see what we get in Disk Utility, see what the heck is going on, because all the cables are in and everything, so I'm not too sure why it can't see the SSDs. Okay, guys, so I'm quite happy with this. Um, we have the SSD showing up and the RAID showing up, which is nice. Um, let's just take a look. Yeah, this is all exactly how I left it. So not too sure why it's not um, why it's not booting like it was before. Well, not booting, but at least give me an Apple logo. So what I'm going to do for experimentation um, purposes now is install OS X on one of the SSDs and see if we can get up and running that way um, and see if, if the problem lies somewhere else. So I've labelled them SSD1 and SSD2. What we will now do is uh, attempt to install Tiger on both of these SSDs and boot from both of these SSDs to test uh, whether or not uh, one of the SSDs or the card has a problem. And if all of this works, then um, we know that the problem lies with the RAID somewhere. And we'll, then what we'll do is we'll install it on the RAID again, boot up into verbose mode like a lot of people suggested and see where the error lies that way maybe we can google it um, and see if there's something that can be done and at that point if there's nothing that can be done other than attempting to use the other SATA card I don't think there is anything else I can try to get it up and running but we will try we're at the very early stages of troubleshooting at the moment but I just want to get both of these SSDs tested just check that they both boot up um, it should be fairly speedy to install Tiger on these. This should take about an hour to get the whole process done. So um, I'll let you guys know the results. I'm, gonna, I'm about to do two Tiger installs on two drives and test them both out. I won't bother with updates and stuff, obviously, because we'll be erasing them straight away again. All right, guys, it's a bit of time later, and I managed to get Tiger on both SSDs, SSD1 and SSD2. So all I'm going to do now is jump back into the Tiger disk, this poor machine, and uh, I'm going to erase both the SSDs, 
seems a bit pointless because I've just spent time installing an operating system on both of them, but nevertheless, I'm going to erase them. Give the RAID 0 one last go, just in case there was a bug in the system last time. Um, highly, highly doubt it, but I'm going to give it one last whirl with this card, and then that is it. Uh, if it doesn't work, we will boot up into verbose mode and take a look at why it's not working. If we can't find that out, then we will try the second SATA card, but I don't currently have it with me because it's in my MDD and my MDD is not here. So everyone, we have reached a point of discovery, which is pretty cool because we know that the SATA card is still working fine because it boots up both SSDs. We know that both SSDs are fine, including the new one that we bought from eBay, so we've confirmed that. And we've also confirmed that the problem does lie somewhere with the RAID 0 configuration and the installation, because as you can see, we've got the exact same problem again. Now, you may notice this keyboard up here, um, and that's in, in addition to the G3 keyboard. It's because I cannot, for the life of me, get this machine to boot up into verbose mode. It is the most thumbed up comment on the previous part um, because obviously it would be handy if I had some kind of error that I could research and then hopefully determine what is wrong with the machine but I cannot for the life of me get it to start up in verbose mode which is really really annoying so um, yeah this is it for this particular little session all right guys it is a couple of weeks later uh, work has been mental it really has and this project has slipped I only just started filming the video and I already got a phone call with cruddy work related news anyway whatever let's just dig into this G3 because I need something to keep me sane um, Yes, here we have it, the G3 in exactly the last same position. Everything is totally the same as you saw in the previous clip, apart from a couple of deliveries that I've received. On eBay, I managed to find another USB 2.0 card. This is one of the ones that I'm familiar with. Um, it's the one that I have in my MDD and the one that was available to purchase brand new on eBay a couple of years ago for PowerMax. It's got one internal, four external. We'll open that later on in the series. Um, they don't sell them anymore. They don't, um, there's nowhere on eBay that really does brand new PowerMax parts anymore, PowerMax upgrade parts, because I guess it's much less of a big deal than it was, you know, six, seven years ago. Um, but yeah, I managed to find that good deal. It was about a tenner or something. The other thing is I got two more optical drives in. One of them is actually incorrect, but I don't mind because it was quite cheap. It was listed as a Pioneer, but it's actually a Sony. Still quite a nice drive, but the other one's a Pioneer. And I actually got a Mac Pro sled with them, which is pretty wild. Um, so they, they'll come in handy. As you can see, here's the stack of optical drives that didn't work. And also, I've got my MDD. I've dug this out and brought it down here because we are going to steal a part from it temporarily. And of course, after we finish the G3 project, we're going to take a look at the MDD. Yeah, we're basically going to continue exactly where we left off. I'm going to have a little tidy of this area first of all so we can actually see what we're doing and I've completely forgotten what all these screws are for and everything which is a bit of a pain but we will get there folks we can get this project off the ground it's been quite a while since this machine has been in the spotlight and uh, that will change very soon as you may be able to tell if uh, you remember the previous upgrade videos quite clearly um, I've already been sort of borrowing parts from this machine here there and everywhere it is definitely not um, it's not in its former glory, but uh, that's okay. We will we will fix that really soon. So we want to borrow this SATA card. Now this is an older SATA card, but it is pretty much the exact same bit of kit. It uses the same chipset, same everything. But I'm just thinking that maybe something will be different to allow us to boot the RAID. This is kind of like the, my last attempt. This one is uh, red and not purple. So. There we go, that's what we're borrowing. Um, what I'll do actually, just because I want to make sure I keep this screw, um, is I'll put another card in its place. Just for now, I'll put this little USB card. There we go, just so we don't forget what's going on. And that is that for that machine. This machine will be making a comeback 
very soon. So they are indeed very, very similar looking, pretty much identical, but we'll try this one, see how far we get. And uh, I'm not gonna put the new USB card in yet, just because we don't wanna introduce anything else that may go wrong. Couple of things, I've moved the card over one because I realized that the new USB card is shorter. So that'll go there in that slot. So the GPU will have more breathing room. And also I've found a couple of shorter, not quite short enough, but much shorter than the other ones, um, SATA cables. So that's pretty good. Um, still gonna get some different ones because these don't match and they don't click in properly. Well, one of them doesn't click in properly. And also they're still a little bit too long, but let's give this a go, see what it does. Okay, so it's time to sit through another install. We've got the new RAID card in, well, the new SATA card, I should say, uh, should say and it recognized the RAID wasn't booting. I've got a funny feeling we're gonna have the exact same scenario because we're dealing with pretty much the exact same card, but it's worth a go. And I do have one more thing to try after this. So guys, we are here once again with an Apple logo with no spinny whirly thing. So I'm gonna do the last thing in my troubleshooting list, and that is, install this card as well. Is this gonna work? I have absolutely no idea. But if it does, that'll be pretty, pretty cool. Interesting, folks, with both of the cards in, it's not seeing either of the SSDs. Okay, everyone, so I finally have a day where I can sort of dedicate most of the day to working on the G3. So let's get this machine sorted. We tried the two SATA cards. It did not work. And off camera, I tried all sorts of different ports. So initially, I think I plugged both of the SATA cables into the same port. Uh, on both of the cards. So I tried them in the diff different ports. I tried all four or five configurations of those cables just in case there were conflicts there. And unfortunately, that did not make the slightest bit of difference. So I'm afraid, folks, that yet again on my channel, and I'm absolutely gutted about this, yet again we have an instance of failed uh, RAID 0 in one of my projects. And what's quite frustrating about that is often in the comments section I get people saying, oh Tom, RAID 0 is such a waste of time and stuff, and then I spend time defending it for my particular purpose, and then it doesn't work anyway. So it's a little bit of a kick in the teeth. But we're only ditching it for now. If I come up with any more ideas, then we'll give it a go. Or if I find an actual SATA RAID card that will work, we can obviously do it, but I mean, that is gonna be next to impossible for this machine. When it comes to flashing SATA cards, the profile that is available, that is readily available and has tutorials for and a proven track record is the profile for these cards that I'm using. So obviously, if I buy um, another SATA card and flash it, it's just gonna have the same sort of uh, quirks as this one with, uh, with RAID 0, but I mean, they're not even necessarily quirks because they're not designed to be operated in the way that I'm operating them. So I can't complain and they've been incredibly robust for me. So what the heck, that's interesting. They've given me this USB card and wrapped it in foil. I've never seen that before. Bubble wrap and foil. Well, that is something. I'm gonna put the USB card in folks just because I'm in here at the moment and I have the screw here for the, uh, the PCI slot, so I may as well stick it in. Now, you may have noticed that I've left the red one in, um, not the Sonic one, I've taken the Sonic one out. That's basically because it was in this slot already, and if you think about it, this is an older card, so it matches this generation of machine a little better, whereas I can put the Sonic one in my MDD when we fiddle about with my MDD. Just in case anyone's wondering, this is what these USB cards look like. Um, these, I've had brilliant, brilliant luck with these exact cards. They've always been black as well, and they've always had this weird thing where this port here has been spaced out a little more than the other three, but I've had literally, including the card that I put in James's Power Mac, or I think I bought him one for his birthday or something back in the day, um, and that worked brilliantly. I think I've actually had about six of these cards, and they've all been fantastic, whereas other ones that I've had 
have been really flaky, um, including that one that I got out of that Power Mac G5. I mean, that one just completely messes up the whole system, as you guys saw. So that USB card is going in that little gap there. It's nice because it's short in between these two other cards, and also it means that the ports are in a nice position on the back of the machine, right underneath the video card connectors, the VGA and DVI. And the S video, there's an S video back there as well, I just had to look to check. Today is a good day, that screw went in with no complaints. So we now have USB and a single uh, SATA card in there. So we're back to the original plan, but of course, without the RAID 0. So the plan is now to boot the system up, to re-erase the drives, install the operating system on one of the SSDs, and then we'll go from there. So that's it for fiddling in the machine at the moment, but we will further fiddle later on. All right, guys, we have Tiger installed on one of the SSDs, and also I've just stuck a pen drive into that USB card, and it is working absolutely fine. So we'll eject that so we can yank it out. Now then, I don't have all the updates installed and stuff, but that doesn't matter. We're going to dive in and install some more hardware in this machine. We'll focus on updates later on. What we'll do now is get these discs up and running. Or, or maybe, hmm, come to think of it, we should maybe do the CPU first. That way, if we need to do a load of restarts or something, if something goes wrong with the CPU, then we won't damage the discs. We'll see. Okay, everyone, I've been prepping for the rest of the hardware installation. Now, we're actually getting somewhere here. Here I have CPU Director, the latest release of CPU Director from PowerLogix. Believe it or not, the last release was in, I think this said either March or May 2007. Anyway, it supports up to Tiger 10.4.9. They did not update their software past then because obviously, you know, 2007 sounds like a very, very long time ago, but this machine is much older than that. Um, so the CPU upgrades were sold for a limited time in whatever year I mentioned in the previous part, 2003, something like that. So they did support their software for a little while, but not past macOS 10.4.9. Now that doesn't mean that it won't work in 10.4.11, um, but we're running 10.4.0 at the moment, the first version of Tiger, because that's what I have on my disk. Um, I just tried to do an incremental upgrade to 10.4.9 because I downloaded the package from the Apple website. It says my volume does not um, meet the requirements for installation, which is odd because it's a bundled upgrade, so it's not as if I needed to have 10.4.8 installed before installing 10.4.9. So really a little bit weird. So what I'm going to do now is just basically install the CPU um, with, you know, with this app here available because at least the app is actually running or what I may even do is because it's so easy for me to install Tiger, I'll update, I'll do all the software updates, see if this app still runs, and see if I can get it stable under 10.4.11, because if I can get it stable, that'll be great for benchmarking reasons and stuff, because obviously my, I did all the other tests on 10.4.11, so it'd be nice to keep all the variables consistent. Um, also, don't know why the bundled update to 10.4.9 isn't working, because I'd be quite happy to sit on 10.4.9, um, because most of the uh, improvements and fixes that concern me were done in the first nine revisions of Tiger. Um, you know, 10.4.11 is pretty much identical to 10.4.10 anyway. Yeah, it's just, I, I don't really know. It's a little bit all over the place trying to figure out what to do when, but I'm eager to get the CPU in this machine now. So I'm gonna do some software updates and let this tick away. This is the CPU heatsink. And the first thing that I can see is this little bit of wire and a screw on the motherboard and the heatsink itself. Must be some sort of grounding thing. Not 100% sure, but I will take it off anyway, obviously, because I'm gonna need to completely remove the heatsink out of the way. So there's the screw and it has a little, I know it doesn't have a washer, it's just like a little kind of thing that attaches there, like a ram thing, I don't even know what you'd call it. Anyway, folks, this is the sort of process uh, where there is no guide and obviously there was instructions that came with the CPU when it was brand new. I don't have those instructions. Um, it's just basically find your own way and try not to break anything. So what we're going to do is I can feel that when we push this clip down that there is a little bit of leeway for us to take the clip off. So I think if I get a small screwdriver, push down and Hey, look at that, folks. Okay, cool. That is the heatsink off that side. 
lovely, happy, happy days. So, um, yeah, underneath you guys can see the old heat sink, uh, old heat sink, the old CPU of course, which we will remove right now. So this part is just like a normal CPU socket. We can lift up to release, and as you can see the whole socket releases, but instead of, oh wow, there we have it. There it is. There is the original CPU, folks. The 400 megahertz G3 that I have literally just yanked out. This is very, very exciting stuff. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put that to one side and I'm gonna be very careful. Here is our upgrade card. And man, this is sort of nerve wracking and exciting. Just all sorts of emotions all in one. I've been waiting literally years to get my hands on this part. And I am now finally putting it in the machine. This is awesome. So let's take a little look at these two compared. The upgrade card is actually considerably smaller than the original G3 CPU uh, riser card, dotter board. Pretty, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty substantial difference there, folks, but I believe the orientation is indeed the same. Let me just check the pins here. So just like a modern CPU, this is indeed a ZIF socket, zero insertion force. So you just literally place the CPU down into the socket. There we have it. Took a little bit of wiggling to get it to drop down because the angles are slightly awkward. But there we have it, there's the new card in. Of course, the really super cool thing about this is it's now a red PCB. So even under the heatsink, it looks slightly more badass. You know, you'll be able to see that it's been upgraded. So there it is locked down. Requires much less force on the lever than modern sockets. Now then, this is the interesting part. Well, we've got to do some thermal paste first and some uh, cleaner. But as you, let's just have a little test fit here. So have a little look and see how things are going to work. Now, apparently, this requires a bit of a bend in the heatsink clip to get the heatsink to sit on here properly. So we're going to have to figure that out. But yeah, overall, it's a smaller, smaller card and. Uh, the heatsink pretty much covers the whole thing. Wow, guys, I can barely speak right now. I am so excited. My hands are even shaking a little bit. This is such, I've eagerly anticipated this upgrade for the longest time. So the CPU card is now in. Um, it's just cooling to sort out and there's no turning back, folks. This is the extreme, extreme part of the upgrade. Okay, guys, stuff is getting exciting. It is time to sort out the bottom of the heatsink so that our new uh, thermal compound and CPU have a nice relationship. I'm all prepared today. I've got my proper cleaner, my proper cloth, and everything is all good. Check that out, guys. Wow. Talk about thermal gunk coming off in a big black splodge. This is going to take quite a lot of scrubbing to get off, I think. But the uh, CPU itself is in a slightly different position on the upgrade card, so this is no good anyway. Well, it wouldn't be any good anyway, but it's nice to have it all fresh, but blimey. My word, folks, that took some scrubbing, and there's still sort of like a little shadow of where it was, but the bottom of the heatsink, the underside, is extremely clean now. But this cloth, that's incredible. Look at all that, guys. All thermal material. Well, I hope so, anyway. This is almost like rubber coming off. Um, anyway, the underside of here is, is lovely and even, oh, just tapped it a little bit, but that's okay. It's only my finger. Um, let's open her up. How are we looking on the CPU front? There's no gloop on it, but what we'll do is we'll give it a tiny bit of a clean. It's literally one drop of fluid. The surface of the heat spreader is so, so minute. Just here's my little finger for comparison of what we're working with here, folks. This is pretty, pretty damn small. So I treated myself to a brand new tube of MX4 because I've lost my other one in the move. I can't find any thermal grease. So let's just rip into this. And with this gigantic tube of thermal grease, I'm gonna attempt to put the world's tiniest glob of, uh, of grease on this CPU. It's gonna be extremely difficult, but let's try and just put a tiny bit. Sorry if my head is blocking the camera at any point, folks or just my hair coming into the frame. Yeah, that will do it, I think. I'm no expert on upgrading uh, PowerPC CPUs, but uh, 
That looks fine to me, in my humble opinion. So, I'm going to do up the cap on the tube. That is loads of thermal grease waiting for a rainy day. And now, just a quick wipe at the bottom of the heatsink. We will place the heatsink on top of the CPU. Like so. Naturally, it's skidding around all over the place. But let's just get our, where is it, heat sink clip. Again, apologies if any part of my body is obstructing your view. But, as always, commentary will be provided. Okay, one side is over. Awesome. And the other side. Now then, let's keep one side on. Shit a brick. Come on. Wild. That is the heatsink on, guys. Only a tiny bit of a bend. When I was reading online, it led me to believe that you had to really, really torque the CPU clip, but it's only a tiny bit of a bend that's actually required. Um, so either the post that I read, which to be fair is pretty crap, um, either the post I read is massively exaggerating or uh, I've done it wrong. Either way, I guess we'll find out after the machine has been running for a little while. But I tell you what, folks, here's this screw going back in on whatever this thing is. And uh, we've, we've got our grease on, we've got our heat sink on. That is our CPU upgrade complete. Oh my gosh. Right, I look like shit. Sorry, everyone. I'm just rough as hell. But if there has ever, ever been a time where I'm nervous to boot a machine, this is that time. This marks a memorable day on the channel because this is the first ever time I've upgraded a CPU in a PowerPC Mac and I am cacking myself. I have no idea if this monkey is going to boot, but all we can do is give it our best shot. So let's close her up. And yes, this is going to be rough camera work to the best of my abilities. Close her up. There we go. Move the tripod out of the way. We'll give it some juice and we'll see if it boots up. Let's get this in here. Let's get this out of the way. Turn the light off because the glare is really hurting my eyes. Okay, let's give it some juice. What is it going to do, guys? What is it going to do? I am so nervous to push that power button. Okay, here we go in three, two, one. Bong. Good start. What are we doing? What's it going to do? What the hell is it going to do? Oh my god. I, <laughs> this is wild. I'm so nervous. But this is extremely exciting. Okay, Grace. Oh, holy sh... Oh my god. It's booted up. Okay, it's not booted up, but it's booting up, I think. Come on, give me a whirly thing. This is incredible. Whirl. Give me a whirly thing. <gasps> Oh, this is tasty. This is really, really, really tasty. This is just... Oh, oh. I can't believe it. I can't believe it works. Okay, I'm not counting my chickens yet, but I can't believe it. Okay. Oh my God, I'm too excited. I'm like a little girl. Okay, what's happening now? <gasps> is it going to boot into the OS? Is it going to give me any issues? Come on. Oh my gosh, there's the loading screen. Guys, there's a new freaking CPU in this machine and it hasn't blown up. <gasps> okay, that's the other SSD I plugged in just because I wanted to confuse things even more. Let's take a look at what it says in about this Mac. There it is. 500 megahertz power PC G3. Oh my word. By the way, folks, I know it's a one gigahertz chip. You've got to set it up in CPU director. That's something we'll move in onto in a minute. But look at that. Okay, I've got to change my battery. It's giving me a warning and then I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so rough camera work continued, but now we have a fresh battery. So let's, um, let's initialize this disk before we go any further, just in case it causes any havoc. So I've got the SSD that I've got my OS on, Macintosh SSD, and this will be my storage SSD, unfortunately, for now. There we go, storage SSD. We'll erase that bad boy, erase that. Now what we're gonna do is launch CPU Director, which I believe should be in my applications. Is that where I left it? All right, guys, what is happening here? Failed to load the current text version. Okay, 
I really hope this isn't gonna give me issues. So guys, what's the upshot? Well, I've gotta reinstall again, hopefully for the last time. So, as you guys know, CPU Director was working under 10.4.0, uh, now it's not working under 10.4.11, but the most important thing is the CPU works. So, we can install 10.4.6, because I got a disk for 10.4.6, Hopefully, it's a bit flaky booting up, but we'll see if we can get 10.4.6 installed. Then hopefully install the incremental bundled upgrade to 10.4.9, which I downloaded from the Apple website. If it refuses to do that, we're going to be stuck on 10.4.6. But as long as um, we have a version where CPU director will work so that we can double that 500 megahertz clock speed, we will be good to go. Um, some of these CPUs, some of these CPU upgrades like the Son Sonnet ones and whatnot, have hardware control for the clock speed. So there's, um, I guess, jumpers or dip switches or something uh, on the upgrade card. I'm not 100% sure, but I know that not all of them require software. Some of them are plug and play. This one is technically plug and play. It'll run at 500 megahertz when you slot it in, as you guys have seen. Um, but you won't be able to run it at 1 gigahertz unless you have CPU director installed and configured. Um, it's not virtualization or anything, it's a true 1 GHz CPU, but you just need the application to tell the CPU to run at 1 GHz. Um, so, without further ado, um, little pause in the video recording. You guys do not want to see a, another Tiger install, because that'll be like the billionth Tiger install. I feel like I've installed Tiger, no exaggeration, about 20 times in this project. But we're going to have to reinstall it again, that's no problem. Um, yeah, let's, let's go for it. The faint sound of Tiger music. It installed the OS just fine with the CPU upgrade in it, which is killer. So for about the gazillionth time, I'm going to go through this malarkey, which I know pretty much off by heart by now. Okay, so I'm going to blast you with the plan. Now that 10.4.6 is installed, let's try an upgrade to 10.4.9. If that doesn't work, we're staying on 10.4.6 until I can be bothered to download 10.4.7, 10.4.8 and give those a go. Maybe I'll have to upgrade one at a time, but we don't have time for that at the moment. So we are done with the disk, of course. Once we have the OS upgraded or not upgraded, we will reload CPU Director and hope that it does what it needs to do. And then I will be a very, very happy chap. So it doesn't want to upgrade to 10.4.9, which is a shame because I forgot um, that it's somewhere between 10.4.6 and 10.4.9 they introduced being able to zoom in using your mouse scroll wheel, which as you guys know is my favorite Mac OS X feature. Uh, it's under this tab and it appears here. Obviously I'm zoomed in right now but it's still just with the keyboard shortcut. Um, as you guys can see here, zoom. So yeah, it doesn't allow mouse zooming in this particular OS. So Oh man, that's kind of a bummer. But anyway, let's continue. All right guys, let's do it. Here we have the CPU, as you guys can see, currently running at 500 megahertz. Let's crank her up. One gigahertz. Apply, what is gonna happen? Has anything happened? Ooh, we have to hit the lock, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, has it done it? About this Mac, will it appear straight away? 500 megahertz power PC. I guess you have to do a restart. I am such an idiot. I completely didn't see this part. What the hell? So I've checked that box. 1000 megahertz. Lock. Away to go. Quit that. Let's restart. Oh my word. What is wrong with me? Restart. Okay, so this is where it gets tense. Okay, so she booted. Let's have a look about this Mac. What? What am I doing wrong? Okay, okay, hang on a second. Well, guys. My G3 is playing itself at chess. Why? Because I'm stressing the CPU to its max, and because that is how you get it to 1000 megahertz. This CPU has two PLL settings, one for idle, one for intensive tasks. A little bit like um, Turbo Boost, maybe. So, yeah. CPU is working guys, 1000 megahertz, what a beast, what a beast of a machine. This is maxing out its CPU, 97% um, going on chess and I'm still clicking around the OS. 
amazing. Let's move on to some more hardware. CPU install, awesome success. So guys, my excitement is just at an all time craziness right now. Okay, we have got one major piece to get working in this machine now that we've got everything else working, and that is our RAID Zero uh, IDE hard drive setup. So what we will do first is we will give these drives electricity, and then we will put in the card and give them power, uh, give them data. So we're going to go for IDE, not IDE, Molex into this one. You guys will have to excuse my uh, lack of talking ability because I am just pretty damn excited right now. Hopefully that connector will be able to sit there and the door will still be able to shut. I think that should be fine. And then we can plug this in here. Rough cabling for now, folks, just to get both of the drives powered up and ready to rock and roll. Although I say rough cabling, not too bad really, all things considered. There we have it. So on the RAID card, we have physical uh, dip switches to set how the card performs. As you guys can see by the diagram, uh, if you look there, number one on the list is striped, which of course is RAID 0. So we have set the jumpers accordingly based on the diagram here to the right. So this is quite a capable PCI card. It's also ATA133, so we get a lovely, lovely much quicker than the original um, transfer speed of the onboard ATA bus uh, using this piece of equipment, which is fantastic. And uh, it should actually be fairly comparable speed-wise to the SATA card, giving the limit, considering the limitations of the PCI bus on this machine. So the card is in, let's screw it in so it doesn't move anywhere. And you guys may have noticed that we haven't screwed in the hard drives yet. That is because they are a nightmare to screw in. And, uh, oh well, on this case anyway, because it's been through quite a lot in terms of drives in and out. And the, the threads are a little stripped, as I was talking about previously. Um, so, basically I'm going to screw them in once I know that everything is working. So, next up we need to connect IDE cables. As you guys know, I splashed out and treated myself to some gorgeous... Um, sort of rounded, really, really nice, flexible IDE cables. Uh, these are ATA100 slash 133, so that's awesome. Um, oh, and as you can see, it says um, they're labelled. You can take these labels off. Let's do that right now, actually, because they will look a little prettier without them. So we have fresh delabeled cables. Obviously, you can tell which one's which, because one side is blue and one side is black, so it makes no difference having the labels off anyway. Oh man, I'm really glad that these cables are pretty damn flexible. These are probably be easier to plug in if the drives are out. There we go, okay, there's one. And luckily the orientation this way is correct. That's the main thing. As long as they were correct at the PCI end, that was the main thing. But as you can see, these, these cables are, are really flexible anyway. It makes doesn't make much of a difference. You can plug them in pretty easily either way and plug in the card end really glad I went for these cables they look mint oh my word folks that looks absolutely killer let's just get this power cable tuck it under there so it doesn't get jammed in the door lovely so there we have it that looks that looks crazy awesome guys with a couple of nice SATA cables as well the inside of this machine will look bonkers Okay, let's close her up, see if it closes. And it closes. Brilliant. Little bit stiff, but that's okay. Once you jam these Power Max full of hardware, they do tend to get a little stiff. Okay, three, two, one, go. Let's see if the IDE gods are gonna be kind to us. Okay, so the machine is a fair bit louder than before, making a bit of noise. Hopefully it'll still boot from the SATA card. There it is, there's the Apple logo. This is awesome, guys. Oh my word, I really hope Disk Utility is gonna see these drives. Hopefully the PCI card is still working. And, oh my word. If there's no conflict between all of these crazy upgrades that I've jammed in this machine, I'll be very shocked. I really feel like we're getting to the meat and potatoes of this crazy, crazy video right now. What a project, oh my word. This thing boots up lightning fast now. 
How crazy is that? How crazy is that? What have we got? System clock. Zoom out. What have we got then? Your computer's clock. Okay, maybe I need to get another battery for this. Right then. No uh, disk thing popped up. Disk utility. Let's have a look. See if it sees our hard drive. Oh, holy crap. What? No way, no way, no way, no way. Look at this cheeky little, cheeky little monster. 467.3 gigs. Okay, what is happening? At the moment, we don't really know. Can we create a volume? IDE storage, and now, but is this connection bus scuzzy? I've never used a hardware RAID in OS X before, so give me a little second to fiddle around. Alright guys, looks like I've got some sort of learning to do in terms of that PCI card. Um, I need to wrap my head around it, see how it works. Obviously, I completely neglected to even take a look at the jumper settings on the Max to drives. So, um, yeah, I'm just so glad everything's working and we've still got a little bit to figure out. So, um, I guess in the next part you guys are going to see starting off with sorting out this storage and then where do we go from there we've shoved a crud load of hardware in this thing i can't believe it this thing is bursting at the seams thank you so much for the continued support i'll see you next time